China's global rise is no secret. A lesser known example of its influence is China's relations with Namibia, the youngest country in southern Africa. Namibia's demand for new government buildings have enabled the Chinese construction companies to thrive. Chinese companies have built many prominent Namibian government structures, such as the State House, the Magistrates Court, and the Supreme Court. This has led to a contrasting skyline of German colonial, African, and Asian social realist architectures. With the in, uh, construction industry was very different because these are usually large state-owned companies. Now the state ownership in itself is, isn't an issue. If China feels they can support and, and uh, um, subsidize those companies, that's one issue. For Namibia, uh, as we discussed before, the, the question is what is the developmental impact on an emerging local industry? And there I would again say we've, we've got it all wrong to say just because it's a few dollars cheaper we, we risk a destruction of the local industry and we create a new dependency on, on foreign companies. The Chinese construction companies get a disproportionate amount of Namibian government tenders, potentially threatening the local industry. We talked to investigative journalist John Grobler, who is very critical about these companies. Look, um, first thing that has to be understood about the Chinese construction companies here is that they are basically state-owned construction companies. They're not private, they're state-owned. Um, which tells you that, uh, first of all, they don't have to make capital provisions to replace plant and equipment as they go along because, you know, the idea is not really to, th uh, to make a profit, I think, so much as to stimulate the Chinese economy. Um, many of these buildings that have gone up have gone up with the financing from Chinese development banks, you know, etc. Um, and it is usually a requirement of these Chinese state-funded projects that 70% of all materials come from Chinese suppliers. You know? But it's m much more than 70%. I mean, it's basically, you know, 99%. Um, the only thing that they basically procure locally um, are things like cement when they can't avoid it. Uh, although they imported a large amount of their own cement at some point, um, and labor, unskilled labor, literally just you know donkey powder to power to you know push wheelbarrows around you know lug bricks. Some of the Chinese companies have been caught using unfair business practices and human rights violations. And, and what we found in our study was the view at the top policymakers, directors in the civil service, etc., of China is totally different from the view on the ground. Workers told us they are the new colonizers. They treat us as bad as the colonizers did. On top, they say China is our new ally. Perhaps the fastest growing sectors of Chinese investment in Namibia are Chinese traders and shop owners in Oshikongo, a boom town on the border with Angola. The town itself owes its um, emergence to the fact that the main uh, road through Namibia meets the Angolan border there. When in the mid-1990s the, the war in Angola started to trickle out after a devastating phase in the war in 1944-1995, uh, um, many Angolans came to Ashakati and Ondangwa, further south, to buy goods. And the businessmen started to see Oshikango as the nearest place to Angola, to do business, without actually investing in Angola. Every China shop we visited sold the same goods. Boxes full of junk littered the shop floors. Crates of power strips, luggage covered in dust, portable black and white television sets. How can all of these shops stay in business when they all sell the same goods? Gregor Dobler has researched this question for the past decade. When I was there in 2004, everybody told me there are so many Chinese shops in Chicago that can't go on. There are too many. They are, it's, the competition is so heavy, they can't make any profit. When I came there in 2006, the number had 
tripled. Everybody said, no, that's it, no. Uh, the new arrivals, they are not making any profit. That can't be sustainable. They're all selling the same cheap goods. Um, how could they make profit? In 2008, the number had doubled again. Everybody was telling the same story. So I'm reluctant to predict what is going to happen. The continued presence of Chinese traders and shops has angered a good number of Namibian businessmen who feel they can't compete. Andrew Nakondo is from Oshikongo, and he tells us what the people there think about the Chinese. Small market business people are not happy with the presence of the Chinese. They are always protesting that no, Chinese must go because they are killing our market. They are killing us, they are killing our, you know, uh, our businesses, I mean. We want to, you know, sell this. Why you go there, you find the Chinese is already they are selling. You want to have a business, say, a taxi to drive, you will find it, a Chinese is also driving a taxi. So, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? So, we, these people are not happy with that type of uh, uh, relationship. The success of the Chinese businesses have brought investors from other countries. <laughs> to, be, to be honest with you, I, I don't really know why these even sell. <laughs> I, I kind of find them to be pretty kinky, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Henny is a businessman from India who came to Oshikongo. He explained to us what his customers look to buy. So you have a woman who walks in here and her idea all of a sudden is like, hey, why don't we open a hair salon? Why can't you open one for me? <laughs> Next thing you know, this guy is buying 35, 40 of these. He's buying hair dryers, buying mannequins. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of customers who come in to buy ovens, to buy approvers, to buy uh, uh, bread, bread heaters. A lot of, lot of machinery, for, mainly for bakeries. Mm -hmm. Henny's business has grown faster than he could have ever imagined. How many warehouses we have? Let, let, let's, let's have a count. We've got, we've got one on that side, yeah. two, three. In the EPZ, we've got a fourth one, f five and six. On the outside, we have four warehouses only for the sofas. Okay, so that's ten. And on the, on the other side of Chicago, we have items which, which we don't sell too often, so they're far away. We've got three warehouses there. So you can calculate it's about 13, 13 warehouses, and we're still growing. China's growth in Oshikongo is not an isolated incident in modern Africa. Neither is the growing construction industry in Namibia. The question to be considered is whether this Chinese presence is positive, negative, or even sustainable. The Chinese are here to stay.